because this government will always be on the side of those who need help the most. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Oh my god, any of you lot see bloody Quirtang's speech at the Tory party conference yesterday? Hell alive. I, never in my life have I seen a bigger excuse for a multi-billionaire circle jerk than that. Oh my god, or oh, oh, Quirtang, or oh, Quirtang, are you going to reverse the increase in corporation tax, are you? Are you? So we will reverse the planned increase in corporation tax. Oh, Quirtang, Quirtang, oh. Are you going to focus relentlessly on economic growth? Oh, you are, aren't you? Our growth plan set out 10 days ago will ensure we focus relentlessly on economic growth. Quirtang, you naughty boy, you naughty boy, Quirtang. Oh, God, it was disgusting. And that conference is what our growth plan delivers. Last week, we saw a Labour Party with the same old ideas, renationalisation. Policies, may I add, Mr. Quirtang, that are working incredibly well in Europe right now, especially in France, that have some of the lowest energy prices in Europe because they have a publicly owned energy company. Because this government will always be on the side of those who need help the most. <laughs> Disgusting. And then the prick has the bloody cheek to talk about physical responsibility. That is why we will forge a new economic deal for Britain, backed by an ironclad commitment to fiscal discipline. Now, long-term viewers of the channel, I do not say this lightly. You know me, you know I will not say this lightly, but it is a sad state of affairs when you yearn for the days of David Cameron. <laughs> oh, I hate myself for saying it, I hate myself, I hate it. But, <laughs> For all the horrendous austerity that that man brought, at least he actually had a plan to pay for it. At least. I didn't agree with it. I thought it was horrendous, but at least he had a plan. I mean, go back to 2000. I mean, traditionally, okay, we know during the 2000s, Labour spent like crazy. And the Tories carried on that trend, if not even more spending, into the 2010s. Now, traditionally, the difference between the two parties is how they how they paid for that spending. Labour would traditionally rise taxes. Conservatives traditionally will slash public spending, cut back the purses on uh, things like benefits and stuff like that. But this lot, <laughs> this lot right now, <laughs> they're not doing anything. They're, they're increasing borrowing and slashing tax. Are we going to pay for all this shit? And Liz Truss, Liz Truss hasn't even got a clue. She doesn't know what's going on. How many people voted for your plan? What do you mean by that? Does she seriously actually not understand the question? Or is she just bluffing to get some extra time on how to answer it? Because either one of those could be, <laughs> could be true. I think she generally doesn't understand the question. Well, you've set out a significant change of direction mm -hmm. from the Conservative government that you were being part of for many, many years. But how many people voted for you to do that? Well, people in 2019 who voted Conservative... Did not vote for a single thing that you're trying to enact. No one. No one. Sheep, sheep over there, sorry. <laughs> English tradition, when you're in a car, you see sheep, you have to shout sheep. Um, works with cows as well. But, but there needs to be an election. There has to be an election. There's a mandate across the country for an election. Now I've called out elections for various different times during the uh, course of my, uh, my YouTube channel over the last year for biased reasons. I hate this government, I have done since 2010. But now there's a mandate for every single voter in this country to call for an election because what this government are doing now is nothing what people voted for in, in 2019. And that was only 40% of the country anyway. Boris Johnson's overall majority was 40% of the country. That's what they wanted. Now, these policies they're bringing forward, well, 1%, 1%, the billionaires <laughs> and the massive corporations, the 1% want these policies that are coming in. It's insane. It's insane. This is not democracy. 
people. This is not democracy. Where no, before I was banging on about it not being democracy, when only forty percent of the country wanted what Boris Johnson was bringing. Now only one percent of the country want what's coming. It's, I, 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 I'm so scared of what two years of this insane policies are going to bring. Slashing of tax. I mean, people, tax is not a dirty word. People, tax is how we pay for our hospitals, for our schools. We need tax money to pay for things. Do you want to carry on with a society where we're waiting hours on end in A&E? When your kids are coming home, complaining about having to share books and there's no equipment for PE and what equipment they do have is breaking. Because this is what's going to happen over the next two years. You won't notice this stuff straight away. You know, all this stuff being enacted and there'll be people out there that have still got their head in the sand of some sort of libertarian trickle-down e economics where the corporations are going to make big, big bucks, loads of money and it's all going to come down to prosperity to us. It's not, people. What it's going to be for the next two years is going to be further decay of this country. And like I say, you won't notice it straight away. You won't notice it today or over the next couple of weeks. But over the next two years, you'll start noticing that your kids start coming back from school complaining about having to share equipment and not being able to fix plumbing in, the, in, in all these little things okay you'll start noticing waiting times at A&E are going up even further you have to wait longer for doctor's appointments crime oh god if it, the Tories are slashed police officers in this country to bare minimum as it is let alone more because this is the only way that they can pay for this if they're slashing tax and they're up in borrowing the only place they can pay for this is public spending it's your local councils that are already at the insane tightest budget they've ever been in the history of this country even further and like i say crime This is, this, is, this is what we're in for, for the next two years, with a government that 1% of the country wants. 1%. No one wants this. No one agrees with this. And, uh, anyway, I could go on. I'll, I'll finish up now, because I'll just, <laughs> I'll get angry. <laughs> Enjoy the beautiful English countryside. Bam, man. As a, uh, let's, let's just take a chill moment. Let's enjoy the countryside. And, uh. Let's get the message out, folks. Come on, we have to have an election. This is not what the people of this country want. Before it was bad enough, it was only 40%. Now it's only 1% of the country wants this bollock. Anyway, going forward. Today, uh, I'll be putting this video out on Tuesday. Tomorrow, I'm finally doing the uh, the rescheduled live stream with that Anna from that Anna YouTube channel. We're gonna be talking all things culture wars, uh, the UK political divide uh, from a left wing and a right wing perspective. It should be a really interesting conversation. I really hope you guys can join in. That's 7 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday. Hope to see you there. Take care. I'm gonna enjoy the beauty, even though it is cloudy and rainy, I'm gonna calm down with the beautiful English countryside. Election, election now.